James. Hello, good morning, James. This is Christy Wagner from the Eagle Library in Lake Zurich. Hi, Christy. Hello. I want to let you know you've joined our senior book discussion group this morning. Great. There's about 25, 26 of us. It's a great group. We're very excited to have you. Well, me too. Thank you. All right. Um, we're going to take some questions from the group, and I have some that I kind of wanted to jump in with right away. Okay. Um, First of all, can you um, tell us, can, have you been surprised by the reaction to Manhunt? Well, I have, uh, in, in two ways. The first way was, I, I, I'm surprised and, and really pleased at how well the book is done, because you never know how a book is going to do. Uh, and I don't know what people want. I, I only know what I like and what I like to read. And I really wrote Manhunt because it was the book I always wanted to read about the Lincoln assassination of the Hunt for Boots but which no one had ever written before me. So I know what stories I wanted to tell and what interested me, and you just have no way of knowing when you're working on a book if, if you know, a million people or, or ten other people are going to be interested in, in what you've written about. So I was gra very gratified at the result. You know, that there are over 18,000 books about Abraham Lincoln, and probably eight or nine hundred have something to do with the end of the Civil War, the end of days, the assassination. And I was a little concerned that maybe the, the you know the, the readers were just saturated with Lincoln books. But when I realized that no one had written this book in, in the way I wanted to do it, uh, I had hopes that people would respond to it. But you know, until the book comes out, you never really know. Well, one other surprise was this: uh, you know, if, if you've read the book, you certainly know that the hero of the book for me is Abraham Lincoln. And at one of my book signings, a a woman approached me. And said, I'm mad at you. <laughs> and and I thought, well, uh, and, and prior to that, uh, my book signings and public events had just been great. Uh, I, I, I've done over 350 radio shows, I've given 50 or 60 talks, I've spoken to a lot of groups, and, and it's been great fun. Some of my friends had warned me about the book tour, but they are they are more writers. Like but Patricia Cornwell is a good friend of mine and, and Harlan Coben. And I think maybe because of the, the terrific violence they might include in their books, maybe some odd people have come to their signing as <laughs> more people. I didn't have any of those problems. And when, when she used that word, I'm mad at you, I'm mad, it reminded me of the scene in my book when Lewis Powell is trying to stab the dead uh, Secretary of State William Seward in his bed. And then uh, the Seward sons and Sergeant Robinson are, are trying to pull him away from the father and drag him into the hall. He looks at uh, one of uh, Seward's sons and says, I'm mad. I'm mad. Yeah. Yeah. So I thought she was quoting Lewis Powell, but when, when I saw she didn't have knives, I said, well, what, 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 why are you mad at me? And she said, because you made me love John Wilkes Booth. Oh, oh. And, and I said, what? She said, yes. And she said, in fact, I wish that I would have been with Booth in his hotel room on the morning of April 14, 1865. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I said, uh, why is that? <laughs> and she said, well, I would have stopped him. And I said, oh, no. Just like everyone else, he would have seduced you to join his side, right. and then you would have helped him. Right. And so it, it, it did concern me. And I did take a look back at the book because I certainly didn't want it to be pro booth. Uh, on the other hand, I didn't want to begin the booth, but begin the book by demonizing booth on page one, because then how would you be interested in following a character who was so hateful through the story? Uh, you know, if Booth hadn't killed Lincoln, uh, we would have all liked him very much. He was very friendly. He was very funny. He was a great storyteller. He wasn't a snub. He befriended people at all levels of society, working people, wealthy people, uh, both. And uh, he was quite a charming person. So if he had not killed Abraham Lincoln, uh, we would have all enjoyed his company. And I wanted to give a taste of that in the book before he killed the president, before he becomes this hunted person. And I, uh, I certainly wanted the reader to feel like you were riding next to him in the saddle day by day as he was escaping. But, uh, and then going back to the book, I was satisfied that, that I did not make John Wilkes Booth into a hero. And she's really the only person who's ever said that to me. <laughs> well, one of our questions um, this 
morning uh, came from one of our group members, and this brought up a whole um, bit, another issue of your narrative style. Um, how did you know? She wanted to know how did James Fonson know what John Wilkes Booth was thinking? Well, that that might depend on, on a particular scene in the in the book, uh, because certainly, like it, for example, in, in in one scene where I describe he enters the president's box and his pupils flare wide. Well, I knew that because that, that, that's just a, a scientific fact that if you go into a dark room, your eyes would open. So, so that I wasn't going into his head. I, I often tried to qualify it by saying, uh, did he think of this? I mean, one of my favorite scenes in the book is when he's hiding in the pine forest with David Harold. And then I write about Booth's sister, Asia Booth Clark, and that wonderful memoir she wrote. And then I write about her, talking about when they were teenagers, how they would camp out in the pine forest, and they would sing songs, and what her brother said. And so I was careful in that scene to say, did he now think of those days with his sister? Because certainly I didn't know that he, that he thought that, and I certainly wouldn't want to assert that. And then, so in many of the cases, if you look at it closely, you'll see I have qualified it by saying, uh, is it possible that he, did he, or did this remind him of? So I think in most of those instances, when, I, when I've out now suggested something, like for example, when I say that, that Booth, I say in the narrative that, that Booth was horrified when he heard, when he read about in the newspapers, how bloody the attack on Secretary of State's family was, well, there's a, a, a reference in Booth's escape journal where he, he alludes to that. So that gave me the idea of suggesting that. So if you go through it point by point, I, I could respond to each particular question about, well, when we have Booth saying this, what was your evidence of that? But, but in general, either it's because I knew something about Booth, read something he had written, knew something from his biography, or I didn't out and out say he thought of the time with his sister when he was camping in the pine forest. But but I'll I'll mention the information and then I'll raise it as a question. Did he think of this? Mm -hmm. Okay, well, that, that helps. Thank you. Um, speaking of narrative style, we we had read our first book for our one book reading community. The title was The Devil in the White City by Eric Larson. One of my favorite books. Okay. <laughs> that was our question. Had you read the book? Yes, and in fact, uh, this is funny. Uh, a few years ago, when I was looking for my next book to write, I uh, talked to my agent about a number of ideas. And my grandmother uh, worked for the old Chicago tabloid newspapers at the very end of the Ben Peck age. She worked for the Chicago Times, the Chicago Sun, the Chicago Sun Times, the Chicago American. And my grandfather was on the Chicago police force from the 1930s to the 1960s, from the Al Capone gangster era to the Vietnam protest era. And they used to tell me wonderful and horrifying stories as a boy. <laughs> and and my, my grandfather would often say things like, don't let him watch the news, or hide the newspaper. Uh, for example, I, I remember when I was a little boy, I'm sure some of your your group remembers the horrible murderer Richard Speck. 